Hello everyone. Today we will see different type of thread pools present in executor framework. Each of these thread pools have a different purpose and different properties which are suited for various kinds of tasks and requirements. So without any further delay, let's begin. The first one is fixed thread pool. It is a thread pool with a fixed number of threads. In this, we instruct the executor framework to create a pool with a predefined number of threads. The pool cannot grow beyond that number. If all the threads in a pool are busy executing the tasks, then the subsequent tasks which are getting submitted to the pool are queued until any thread become available. Let us discuss one real world use case for fixed thread pool. Suppose you are handling a web application. In that you have implemented multi-threading to handle more than one HTTP request at a time to improve the performance of your application. Now you want to control the number of threads getting created because you cannot keep the thread count same as the number of HTTP requests coming to your web application. Maybe your web application becomes a hit overnight and thousands of requests are hitting your web application. In such scenarios, you have to limit the resource usage by controlling the maximum threads that can be created to prevent the overload. You can use a fixed thread pool to maintain a fixed number of worker threads which will process the incoming requests. Let us see how it can be implemented. In this implementation, we will first create an object of executor service and then define the thread pool size. Then we will define a runnable task using a lambda expression and a dummy processing function also. In the end, we will submit the runnable task using simple for loop to mimic the multiple concurrent HTTP requests. Here we have a thread pool of size 5 which is created. That means there will only be maximum of 5 threads available in the pool for task execution. If more than 5 tasks are submitted for execution, then the extra task will wait in the queue until any executing thread becomes free. Then we have this runnable task which is responsible for doing the processing of HTTP request. Here we have added a delay of 1 second that represents the time taken by one HTTP request processing. Now let us say your web application receives 10 HTTP requests concurrently. So to mimic this we are using a simple for loop to submit 10 tasks to this particular executor. A very important point to remember here. Once all the tasks are submitted to the executor, always remember to shut down the executor. This will help in reclaiming the resources used in the thread pool. Now let us run this code and observe the output. Here you can see first 5 threads picked 5 HTTP requests to handle and as soon as any thread becomes free from previous processing, it picks another HTTP request from the queue and start the processing. Now let us see few pros and cons of using fixed thread pool. First is it guarantees a fixed number of threads. That means you will always have those fixed number of threads ready to execute your task. With limiting the number of maximum threads, it prevents resource exhaustion as well. That means if load is increased too much, it will not create more number of threads and in that way help to manage the system resources properly. Now if we see what are the disadvantages or cons for using fixed thread pool. Now suppose you have set of thread pool size which is very high, but actually most of the time that much load is not present on the system. So in that case, it will lead to resource wastage. Secondly, if load is very high, but the thread pool size is very small or insufficient, then it can potentially lead to the increased response time for the user also. So deciding the appropriate thread pool size becomes very important. If you want to learn about what factors affect the decision on thread pool size, please check out this video. Link is given in the description for the playlist. Also, you can access the same video from top right corner of your screen or i button. Another implementation is cached thread pool. It is a thread pool that creates new threads as and when it is needed. So there is no fixed thread ready for the execution. Suppose if 10 threads are required, then it will create 10 threads and perform the execution. In this type of thread pool, 
it reuses the previously constructed threads if they are still available. Don't you think that should create problems? Let us say for a specific iteration, this pool created 1000 threads for 1000 tasks to perform the execution. That means those 1000 threads will still be available in the memory and using all the resources required? Well, that's not completely true. If any thread remains idle for a certain amount of time, then they are terminated and removed from the pool. This will help in reclaiming the resources. To create this type of thread pool, we just need a very small change. So when in our previous code, if you see, uh, to get the executor instance, we are calling executors dot new fixed thread pool. This particular call returns a pool of fixed number of threads. So instead of that, what we can use, we can use executors dot new cached thread pool. And we need not to specify any size here because it will dynamically create uh, the number of threads as and when it is required. Everything else remains same. You can see we have a runnable task which is responsible for processing the HTTP request. So it is printing start of HTTP request, ending of HTTP request and in between a processing of that particular request as well. And similarly, we are submitting 10 different tasks using executor.execute and providing this runnable task as an input. And in the end, we are shutting down the executor. Now let us execute this and observe the output that how many threads are actually getting created in this particular type of thread pool. Here you can see for 10 HTTP requests, it has created 10 new threads. Now you might also be wondering that what if the concurrent request count increased to 1000? Will it create 1000 threads? Well, answer to that is yes. This is how cached thread pool actually works. For a very high number, it may not create the exactly same number of threads, but it will be close to that. Let us run this code for 1000 requests and observe the output. So here you can see this thread pool created 1000 threads to handle 1000 concurrent HTTP requests. Now here is a question for you, where we can use this type of thread pools in real life scenarios? Comment in the below section, the real world use cases for cached thread pool. Now before we move ahead to discuss another implementation, let us see few pros and cons of using cached thread pool. If in your application only a sudden burst of load is coming, then using cache thread pool can help in adjusting the number of threads based on the workload, which can be efficient for bursty workloads. It also avoids resource wastage by terminating the idle threads. Under cons, if your application experiences very high load for a very long period of time, and that too on consistent basis, then it may create too many threads and potentially cause resource contention. As we cannot manage the thread life cycle explicitly, that might lead to uncontrolled resource consumption as well. Another implementation is single thread executor. Suppose you do not want to create many threads but also wants to have a synchronous execution of tasks with respect to the main application thread. This type of thread pool will help you in this case. Single thread executor provides a thread pool with only one thread. Tasks are executed sequentially in the order they are submitted. Let me show you how it is actually implemented in Java. Here you can see it is returning object of thread pool executor with core pool size and maximum pool size as one. If you see the method just above that, it is same as fixed thread pool with a hard coded thread pool size of 1. So it is nothing but just a variant of fixed thread pool where the number of threads are fixed to 1. Let us discuss one real world use case for single thread pool executor. In your application, suppose you want to ensure that log messages are processed sequentially and not concurrently. That means when a message is getting processed, the other messages should be queued to the processing until previous one is processed. Let us quickly see how it can be used in the application. 
to obtain this type of thread pool we just need to use new single thread executor method call of executors class this will return a single thread executor pool now if we run this code then it will execute the submitted task in sequence So here we can see if a message processing is started then no other message processing will be done until that in progress message is processed. Only after that the next message is processed. It will just create one extra thread to execute the submitted task in parallel to the main thread. Now suppose you want to monitor the status of a service by hitting its API after a particular interval of time as a heartbeat. So how to achieve this functionality? Scheduled thread pool will be able to help in implementing our requirement. It is a thread pool that can schedule commands to run after a specified delay or to execute that particular command periodically as well. This scheduling is of two types. One where the next iteration of command execution to be done after a fixed time. Suppose we have defined the command should be executed after every 5 seconds. So the first time it will start the execution at the beginning that is 0 second and the next iteration will start at 5th second. It does not matter how much the previous execution has taken or is it even finished. It will start the next iteration after the defined time of 5 seconds. Here you can see the task 1 or the iteration 1 finished in 4 seconds and the task 2 started exactly at the 5th second. If you notice task 2 took 7 seconds to complete and finished after 12 seconds but task 3 did not wait for task 2 to complete. It started its execution at the 10th second which is the defined 5 second difference. The second type is when we want to start the next iteration after a fixed delay once the previous iteration has finished. In this example, we have defined the delay of 1 second. That means next iteration will start after the completion of previous task with delay of 1 second. Here you can see task 1 finished in 4 seconds and then with the delay of 1 second, task 2 started the execution. So task 2 took 5 seconds and then with the delay of 1 second, task 3 started at 11th second and similarly it will go on for the next iterations as well. Scheduled thread pool support both these operations. Now let us see both these scenarios in code as well. So this is the first example. In this example of schedule at fixed rate, the next iteration of task will be starting after every 2 seconds. So in this case, we will not be using simple executor service reference. For this, we need to use scheduled executor service. And to obtain its instance, we can use executors dot new scheduled thread pool. And in that, we can provide the size of thread pool. And after that, we have this method schedule at fix rate that we can call by passing multiple parameters. The first parameter will be the runnable that will be uh, processing the request and second parameter we can provide an initial delay that means suppose if we the first iteration itself we want to start it with some delay that we can mention here the third parameter is providing the period that means after how much time the next iteration should start and the last parameter is what is the unit of these two parameters so we are mentioning that time unit is in second so if zero is the initial delay that means there is no delay so with zero seconds of delay it will start the first iteration and after every two seconds it will execute the next iteration of the task now to mimic some processing we have created this processing methods and there we have added the sleep time of one second here we have also added a delay of 10 seconds in the main method so that before shutting down the executor at least 4 to 5 times the task can be executed. So these things can be set depending on your application. Now let us run the code and observe the output. So here you can see the task is getting executed every 2 seconds and once the delay of main thread is expired 
then no new task was scheduled to execute so first task started execution at 24 seconds then 26 28 30 32 and so on now let us see how the other type of scheduling work which is schedule with fixed delay so in this case you can see it does not matter if the task one is taking more than two seconds the second iteration will always start after two seconds but what we want is we want that once the first iteration is completed only after that with a certain amount of delay the second iteration should start in this here one task execution takes around one second that we have already seen and we have added two seconds of delay that means once the task execution is complete then after that two seconds of delay will be observed before starting another iteration of that task now let us run this code and observe the output. So here we can see the task executions have 3 seconds of difference. The first one executed at 19, then 22, 25 and 28 so on. Now depending on your application requirement, you can opt for any of these methods for scheduling the task execution. Now here is another question for you. What do you think are the real world use cases for scheduled thread pool? Please share your views and feedback in the comment section. There is one more type of pool which is work stealing pool. We will discuss that in the next video which will be on folk join pool. If you find this video useful, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Happy coding.